Welcome to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ. Today, I'm so excited to be interviewing the wonderful Hayley Bertels Eves. Now, Hayley is a multi award winning business and brand strategist, founder and CEO of Be Inc., founder and producer of Obsessed Hub, founder and CEO of Love Lockets. Do you have you got any more <laughs> happening there? Uh, and a passionate philanthropist who created Australia's largest lunch to end human trafficking and child exploitation, which is just amazing. As a result of Hayley's huge success, her story has been featured in the Sydney Morning Herald, Koshy's Business Builders, Channel 9, Channel 7, Courier Mail, Australian Financial Review and Daily Mail, just to name a few. One of Hayley's mottos in her B Inc business is, which I absolutely love, we make those who do good look good absolutely love it uh so welcome Haley. thank you that was an amazing rap i'm like wow i got some big boots down like who's she talking about that's who woman <laughs> <laughs> and i wanted to start with you know it's so interesting when gee social media is a funny beast isn't it because i've been watching you for a little while and i said this to you the other week I've been watching you and admiring what you do because you really, you know, you put yourself out there, you say it as it is, you sometimes touch on some really challenging topics that people, most people don't even go near. Uh, and I just love your approach to, to doing that. Uh, but at that stage, I didn't even know what you did. And so when I approach you, I'm like, I just know that this is a really cool chick and then I found out, wow, you uh, you you really have created some great stuff. So, so tell me a little bit about about yourself. I mean, you've, how many businesses have you got? Um, well, the ones that you mentioned, and then there's one that I'm the CEO of a family business called the Motor Hospital that's been running for 40 years. So effectively, I run that for the family. But um, I've got that. I've got Obsessed Hub. We've got Love Lockets. We've got Be Inc. And then of course the stuff that we're doing with AWL, which is Australia's largest lunch. So um, it's. You know, I actually was having that conversation today uh, with a client um, who's got ADHD and I am a massive ADHD person. I'm undiagnosed, but there's no no if, buts or maybes about it. I am ADHD. I'm off the charts ADHD. And how do you fit yourself in a box? How do you fit yourself in a box when my type of personality is designed to be creating other little boxes around those boxes and kind of like I jump in and out of different boxes um it's it's quite hard to kind of a lot of people it's mind-blowing for people because they're just like oh god how do you do so many different things plus I'm a mother right and a wife and a sister and all the other things that come with being a human being for me if I don't have those boxes and I don't have those little rooms to kind of duck in and out of I um I'm doing myself an injustice so yeah. I like at my core I'm a problem solver I like helping. I love helping. I get such a kick out of helping people and solving people's problems. Um, yeah, I, don't, I, I just, I'm just me. I like. I don't under. I get it because people from the outside looking in just go, "You're just a crazy bag of cat of like a whirlwind." I think I've been described as. Um, but I'm deeply passionate. I'm a very passionate person, and if I believe in something, I'm I'm all in. Yeah. And you started business at a young age, didn't you? Yeah. Um, I've worked from the age of 13. So I worked wow. for uh, my family when I actually uh, was the sole income earner for my family at the age of 13 when we first came to Australia um, and worked in the supermarket, you know, after hours and kind of doing all the stuff and the things required to kind of eat and pay rent. So work ethic is a big thing for me. Uh, a lot of people go, God, that would have been so tough. I'm like, no, actually. I was the weirdy. I was the big weirdo at school. And so I kind of really didn't fit in these boxes, these, you know, structural boxes that school has and still has set up, which actually blows my mind. 20 yeah. years down the track and they're still not really doing anything very differently and still don't accommodate for people like me, even though the world actively at the moment, I mean, it's obvious people like Google are, are hiring, actively hiring people with ADHD, dyslexia, ADD, because inevitably we are the people that, come up with the big crazy ideas and make them happen so I um yeah I started my first business I started my first business when I was 21 
but I came up with many concepts before that and didn't really kind of monetize anything, but that was a learning curve. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I did. I've created something amazing with my sister. Um, I started it usually yeah. the case. And then my sister jumped on board and said, Hey, let's do this together. And so it went, took off like a rocket. Whee! <laughs> and hit the floor. <laughs> and what was, what was that? Porcelain Rose. What was, was that? Porcelain Rose. And it was like a, do you remember back in the like mid nineties, actually late nineties, there was like a jean bag and we, you make them out the tops of jeans and you cut yeah, them I, I used to work at Just Jeans, woman. <laughs> I used to, well, we used to cut, we used to buy from Lifeline at 25 cents a kilo. We used to buy these jeans. And back then when it was super cool and you'd have all these like seventies jeans with these cool patterns and everything else, I'd cut them, turn them inside out, machine them, line them, and make handbags out of the tops of jeans. And it went crazy. Wow. 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 It's fantastic. And then from there, you then at 21, what did you start at 21? Was that the business you started at 21? Or was it- yeah, that was Porcelain Rose. I was working in a bar. And um, I was fortunate at the time I was dating um, a guy called Daniel and um, dated him on and off for three years. And we were just sitting around, you know, Friday night dinner with their family. And I was fortunate to have those Friday night dinners with Simon Reynolds. Do you know Simon Reynolds? No. So Simon with two eyes, you Google him, he's Googleable. He's incredible. Um, he's an incredible mentor, coach and um, entrepreneur. He, he does a lot of work, Google him. But I'm fortunate to actually spend most of my Friday night dinners with him. And, you know, I had such so, such low self-worth. I really didn't think that I could do anything. I knew I was creative. I was always making stuff and doing things, right? Like yeah. literally I make I make stuff. I don't yeah. sell them, but I'm constantly create. I'm in constant creation, right? That's what I'm built for. I'm a tinker. And it wasn't until Simon were going around the Friday night dinners and, you know, so Simon, how was your week? Oh, yeah, well, we signed these many deals and we did this and had these clients. And so... Honourable Justice Marcus Einfeld, what did you do this week? <laughs> you know, <laughs> completely out of place. You know, this kind of like early school leaver sitting around this beautiful dinner table in Wallara in the eastern suburbs. I was lucky enough to date to date Daniel. Uh, and if he's listening, uh, we're still very, very good friends yeah. But um, to this day. Um, and then go around the cable, like Catherine Eisman, um, who is an NBC Today producer. She's an incredible person herself. She does a lot of the corresponding for Sunrise. Not then, she didn't. She was in the middle of writing a book. Yeah. And they'd all tell their stories and it'd get to me and I'd be like, okay, so um, uh, yes, yeah, so I'm just working in the bar. <laughs> oh, and I've decided that I wanted to go into childcare and, you know, all these kind of things. Yeah. And this one time, one Friday night, I said, you know what? I made this handbag and Simon's eyes were like, poof, like so lit up. And he had like, from that point, cause I always had like such low self-worth. I was like, I can't do anything. And then he just engaged me and he's like, Haley, this is something. I was like, okay. Next Friday night comes, he brings me a book caught by um, Prue Goddard, Women in Business. I have to this day, still haven't read that book. Still haven't wow. read it. <laughs> but on the front cover, in the front cover of that book, it said, may all of your porcelain roses blossom, right? Because I came up with the idea and the name and all that kind of stuff yeah. long before. And that's actually how most of my businesses start. If I can't come up with a name, it doesn't happen. That's my actual creative process, right? So yeah, came up with a name and it was that. And then I just wow. started doing. I was like, shit, well, if Simon believes in me, I can actually make this happen. So, yeah. Wow. Well, and then you went on to create, what, four or five businesses? yeah <laughs> wow that's then, amazing yeah then I did um baby wedge which was the next big success that took off like a rocket yeah and solved lots of problems in that space and then from that one we did love lockets um and then from I've love had a look at your love lockets they are amazing they're gorgeous thank you yeah love it and yeah. so how do you balance all of those businesses um Good quality. That's why it's my dog. Oh, God. Sorry. Hello, puppy. <laughs> As an astro, we, I bring my dog to work every single day. He's a legend. <laughs> he makes all the hard decisions around here. That's how I do it. That's how I balance all of these businesses. I'll have it's to astro dog. <laughs> um, staff, really yeah. good quality support and people around me. Yeah. Brilliant. I, you know, I, and I, 
I've made enough poor poor choices and enough poor decisions to um, recognize them now before before they come. But it's really important to have good. And if you if you are by yourself, and I appreciate that not everybody can afford staff like your who you um, have around you, your friends, your mentors, your coaches, it's really important. Yeah, absolutely, mm. absolutely. So, so what in business? What what has? And I know you would have had many challenges and many mistakes that you've made and learnings. But what's something that stands out for you? What's what's a big learning that you've had? Oh, um, God, there's so many. I've ended up in Supreme Court, High Court, all the freaking courts. Um, so like, so okay. You, Love lockets. I ended up, or actually, let's take baby wedge, right? Because baby wedge was a bit more of a kind of a learning curve where I spent five years with lawyers battling a defamation case against Channel Nine, right? Um, and a lot of people say, Jesus Christ, I actually lost the business because of that, wow. right? Yeah. Um, had I had my time again, knowing what I know now, and I get that you can't go back, would I do things differently? No, but yes. No, I wouldn't. But having the knowledge, I would have, because I would have put my effort and energy not into lawyers and legal fees and trying to take on the giant, right? Because it really did come down to um, how much money you had. Yeah. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't fight all your battles, but that energy and the effort could have been pushed into actually saving my business and actually not giving it attention. So my ego got in the way. Um, because the report that the actual story that they ran it was just dumb. It was stupid. And it really didn't hold any substance, but I gave it energy. I gave it fire because instead of focusing on doubling, triple, quadrupling down on what makes us so amazing, yeah, I focused on taking Channel 9 down and it was never going to happen. Yeah. So, so you're, I, you're, I can see you, you're like a fighter. Yes. <laughs> you know, and so particularly for, for rights, and I could see, and I, I see myself in you because I'm a little bit the same. And so sometimes for me that stirs me really well and yeah. other times it doesn't because I'm like a dog with a frigging bone. <laughs> Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like I'm like, I've got, you're like, this is when it comes to justice yep. and fairness. I've got um, like a fucking goosebumps right now. Yeah, I am a dog with a bone and I can see as I said, I can see myself in you. And in that case, I would probably have been the same to go, no, you know, that's not right. And well, held on. Oh, because it was such a big deal for me. Like I made this product to solve a very serious problem with my son. And then I found out that other people had it and it just went, took off. We were in Koshy's business builders. We got unpaid endorsements from Danny Minogue. Pinky McKay was on board. We were therapeutic, good approved. We had everything, right? Dream business. And it took one and I can't blame Channel 9 because I still, this is one of the learnings, right? You know, for years I was like, oh, Channel 9, they're a bunch of arse. I, was, I still feel the same way. I think Channel 9, are, you know, anyway, different different podcasts. Um, so I, for years I really wanted to blame them, but it was a, as a result of my choice. Yeah, I yeah. made the choice to chase Channel 9. I sued them. Yeah, It wasn't the other way around. I could have actually fought from a completely different space, but I think business-wise maturity um not just as a person but as a as a business woman uh the maturity level just wasn't there yeah. i literally got pulled and of course your lawyers and everything everybody they all egg you on because you know i say egg you on but like we actually had our case on contingency so every single lawyer that we had none of them got paid yeah when i lost we all lost it was a big deal we had clive Everett too so we had a big hitter yeah um, he's actually no longer with us anymore. So he was incredible. And he's actually run a couple of cases when we what when we lost and when we when we won. So yeah. Yeah. No, I am a fighter. Yeah. Sometimes though, I can tell you at the age of 43, you've got to learn to pick your battles. And that just wasn't one of them. Yeah. And I'm 51 and I'm still learning. <laughs> what are you drinking? Because you look fab. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's, yeah, I need a filter, but all, all good. <laughs> so so talking about wins what are some of your wins that you've had that i have wins stand out for you without sounding i mean big standout ones i, w I win every single day um yeah. i mean how do i quantify a, like a really good quality win i can have little wins like today i had a little win because you know i had a client that we were kind of like we were at loggerheads with certain this happens all the time with my clients i get 
because I know what I'm doing. You know, you've hired me for a reason. I, I just listen to me. And uh, I resolved an issue. That's a massive win for me because yeah. it's customer satisfaction. Then I have, you know, other things that's kind of like you, you get a massive client or I don't know. I win every day. Yeah. I, I'm and that kind of person. I'm like eternally optimistic, full of energy all the time. Um, yeah, I kind of, I like to talk about my losses more than I talk about my wins. Wins are easy. Yeah. You don't learn much from your wins. You learn more from, you, from your failures than you ever do. Your wins, yeah. I believe. And how is your businesses, you know, going through everything that's happening with the COVID, how has that affected your businesses? And I'm assuming it would affect different businesses different ways. Yeah. Yeah. Love lockets, it didn't do anything. It actually increased. People were shopping online. Yeah. Um, Motor Hospital continued. We're an essential service. Bink, I lost pretty much all but one of my clients. Um, but lost that by, I mean, by paying. But we were being held, obviously, with um, all sorts of incentives and everything else from the government. So I helped, they held me, I held my clients and we just basically cruised along until we were back to being able to um, and get re-engage again. So yeah. kind of really didn't, it was a blessing for me. Yeah. I actually really had a fun time during COVID and the lockdowns because it gave me, it slowed everything down yeah. and it gave me perspective. I started Obsessed Hub, like this studio, all this stuff and these things. Yeah. It would never have happened if it wasn't for the absolute shut down of of the craziness that is my life yeah so. and i think it's so interesting because you know most people humans hate you know they get so scared with uncertainty and i can see that you're that type of personality that actually thrives in uncertainty but were there times through COVID that you that you think because for me um yeah there was so much creation that i did in the last 12 months but there was still those oh, oh fuck moments. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I run events, right? So I train people in speaking. And so, you know, we'd have an event and it'd be like the week before and, oh, you can't have it. I'd be like, fuck. You yeah. know? Yeah. <laughs> how, did you, how did you coach yourself through those types of moments? Because you've got a team, you've got to be up, you know, you've got to be inspiring them. What were your strategies through those times? But the system. Literally, do you know, like, it, literally, I am that person. You say I'm a fighter, but I'm a bit more than a fighter. I am defiant. I, when someone says I can't do something, I'm like, why not? Absolutely ridiculous. I've never heard of anything ridiculous. There's got to be a way. That's a rule. Rules, not meant to be broken, because not all re rules are meant to be broken, but rules are meant to be developed. Yeah. Developed. I'm not about breaking the rules necessarily, as I am by learning them, knowing them, playing them, and actually adding to the said rule um you know we had bloody the AWL event and raised 126,000 in october last year yeah, september, yeah. Sorry, september last year that's in sydney yeah, no it was in on the gold coast we hired the gold coast convention center right they were yeah. like oh but you can't have an event i said yes i can give me a room big enough the gold coast convention center is not going to say no or any center is not going to say no they need money We'll be COVID compliant. Give me a room for a thousand. We'll put three hundred people in it and raise one hundred twenty-six thousand. Wow, because that's people that, right? There's people that were desperate for connection. The one thing that people did was everybody pulled back into their corners, and oh, we can't have events. Yeah. Well, you can. You just have to think a little bit bigger. Yeah. No. And that yeah, and that was the one thing that I I really saw from my business that. There were a lot of people because I kept going out. As soon as we could have an event, we were out there. Like we were out and we've continued to do that where I've seen a lot of people completely go online, mm. which I think is, is is still great. But I think people are so freaking craving human connection out there. You know, yeah. they're craving it. They're craving the, the hugs, the, you know, if you can hug, I, I hug all the time anyway. Yeah. Um, I'll hug anyone. If you were here, I'd give you a hug. Me too. <laughs> Um, but, you know, people are crying. I couldn't wait to get them in the room. So as soon, as soon as we could do it, we would do it. And I suppose with that came the risk factor because you didn't know whether you'd lose your money or, you know, um, you'd have to change the date. But I think I think I played with that as well, mm. you know, played around with that and just thought, you know, let's just keep doing it and, and we, there's no stopping us. Well, um, I think... Um, what's what do we know about business right we know that planning is important right i'm a big fan of 
getting just getting started get it done and you can plan later right don't get me wrong like i love i love a good you know kind of kick start and just yeah fly by the seat of your pants i love that and i think it's really important but actually that's where most of the creativity happens and most of the magic happens right and you've actually actively got to source that in small business you've got to look and to create those when you're feeling like you're in a bit of a lull go back to basics and go back to that kind of like ground look for that energy again right yeah but planning can be so good we still need planning regardless of that and we have to have you know like planning at some point um for me the, the future planning of people like we had um i've got a client that does the same thing networking events she's freaking out but we did a whole bunch of other stuff that basically just made it possible for her she was online she was we were doing networking through bloody facebook and all sorts of different things and people keeping people engaged because at the end of the day we were all in the same boat and if, as yep. long as you continue to show up some people shrunk and i mean shrunk yep. to non-existence whereas if you shine and you actually collaborate and reach out to people and say hey i'm here you'll float to the top it's an, a unique opportunity where you can float to the top where you wouldn't have had that chance before with all the noise yeah right so, you know, events are going to be massive for 2021 and 2022. That's Huge. what I believe too. Yeah. And I think, and I love what you said about, you know, the, that, that dance, I suppose, between activating and planning, because I see so many people stuck in the planning that they're not activating. And, yeah. and so, you know, often I'll say to to my speakers, I'll say, you know, if they're going to, if they're thinking about doing an event, I'll say, freaking make the date, mm. tell people to come, and then you plan everything else. Like, yes. as long as you've got the venue, as long as you've got the date, as long as you've got an idea of what you're going to do, do that, call the people, you know, and then you know they're coming, and so you better get creating, sister, you know? So right. it's a little bit of the, the other way around. Yeah. Well, they, they get afraid of failure. People are, I love failure. I think it's great. I'm really good at it. <laughs> so so, so I'm like, yeah, I can fail. I fail like a, like a boss. But um, I think people get afraid of the failure. So I think, yeah, the, the planning the planning side of it is important to a point. But the thing is, get it, getting out there and just getting it done is, you know, you've got to find a freaking market. What's yeah. worse is doing all the freaking planning. And then you get to a point and go, well, hold, up, hold on a second. I've got a product that nobody wants, nobody needs. And then you've got crickets and then all of that is a waste of time. There's no greater way yeah. to book the date, make it happen. And anybody that thinks that they're going to show up and they're going to have a problem free event is off their rocker. There's something yeah. that happens, you know, look at the event bloody wedding planning industry, you yeah. know, they run like hundreds and hundreds of weddings a year. And at every single wedding, there is inevitably going to be something that goes wrong. Yeah. But that's part of it. They're the stories you tell. Yeah. You know? And I think I, I found too in part of that activation is that when you're still developing, like people are coming and you're still developing something, you can then get their help in development. It's like, so what are you guys looking for? And what are you? And so then you're like, oh, shit, that's good content. I'm going to add that. <laughs> Collaboration. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Good C word. I love the C word. <laughs> so, so with... All, and you mentioned Simon being, I'm imagining he was one of your mentors. Yes, who Lynn. else? Who else helped you to get where you are today? Who were your mentors? Because I think they're really important. I work, um, I kind of like, I've got many um, in lots of different spaces. We've got, um, I pick up the phone and I'll speak to people like Tracy Mathers, you know, Mathers Shoes. Yeah. Um, so I've got her on speed dial. And pick her like, and she mentors me in a, in a completely different way to what, say, um, Simon would. Um, or do you know who one of my greatest mentors is? My husband, right? Yeah. He doesn't know anything about entrepreneurship. He doesn't know anything about really business other than watching me go through it all. And he works downstairs in the motor hospital, so he runs the front counter down there. Yeah. Um, but he just keeps me centered. He keeps yeah. me grounded, and he keeps me human and real so that I'm not constantly feeling like I'm on that rat wheel because it's hard to be in business as an entrepreneur, especially when you're on your own and you're making all those decisions, you know, it just feels like it's all you are. It is because yeah. it can be all consuming, right? Yeah. 
and then you just kind of at the end of the day and there's nothing left for yourself it's not and then it stops being fun and then the creativity goes and then you're you know you become resentful and then you know before you know it you're shutting down a business so um yeah so there's that and, I, and my parents you know all the cheesy stuff and the things you know as a family we've been through an awful lot together um quite often I'll catch myself all those things that I used to kind of push back as a as a young adult I'm never going to be like my parents and then you know like the other day I was like caught myself saying something and doing something I'm like shit I've just turned into my dad <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> so all those kind of like little little things so like I I take my mentor like you people like you yeah you know what I mean I love just kind of I remember I said earlier you know like who you hang around and who you're you're very careful who you take your business advice from and everything else. So uh, yeah. just be right yourself. I need continuous kind of like more of a support network and kind of, I've got lots of different, I don't know where I'm going with that, but I've got lots of different yeah. mentors and coaches in, lots of, in different places. Beautiful. So what, uh, in regards to your values as a leader, what do you think your values are? Loyalty and integrity yeah beyond anything in everything that i do um and who we work with um that slogan is more than just a um a fancy slogan you know we help people that do good look good um i've been in business for a long time i understand that what we've got is magical um and what we create for our clients is magical um and it's a superpower and it's a talent and i don't want to make assholes or bad people look good because I know what what make, what quality branding and branding strategy does for people. We can literally yeah. take a turd and make it this big, shiny, sparkling diamond for everybody to see. But if what's on the inside is not matching what's on the outside, I, I want no part of it. Yeah, and I, I so love that. And, and because I'm exactly the same, and some of the techniques, um, I saw a post not long ago in regards to NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. Yeah. So... You know, so so that's, that's a technique for those that are listening that uh, you can use that is, it can be so influential mm. and it can be used for such good, but it can also be used to really influence people in a really negative way. Oh, and yeah. so for me, it's really important who I work with that I'm not developing their skills in those areas. Yeah, it's going to influence people in a negative way um, in this world. So I'm very clear with, and I think it, you know, once you work with people that you've got the same values, mm. uh, and and I, I in my business it was really early on where I was like, I, you know, I even be like really needing say a sale, and I'd be saying no to this person and go, oh, shit, this is so hard to do, but I knew in my gut that it just wasn't right. Yeah, I've done that too. We've like, oh, we, what we do is we outprice clients sometimes and we yeah. literally, uh, and because sometimes I go, yeah, could I work with them? Do I want to? If we do work with them, it's going to be an absolute draw on us emotionally. Um, but if they're willing to pay for it because we know how like needy they're going to be, then we put structure around that to kind of support them in a way so that it would still, it kind of equals out. So I'd only need to give what we normally give and then I can kind of like handball that to, to other team members. So it depends. Um, yeah. Sometimes, but quite often, yeah, we usually just say, no, I don't think you're a right fit for us or, you know. Yeah, yeah. What would you, from a, from a particularly a branding perspective and, a, and being the owner of all of these different businesses, what what tips would you give people right now, particularly the businesses that are, challenge right now what would what would be your top tips for them back to basics straight back to basics when people are when you're in this is anything like art of war like it's kind of tactical stuff so go back to basics go and check good quality accountant you need to get a good quality account that's first and foremost right because yeah. when you start to cut because it's usually people feel the pressure from the financial side of things it's not like most of us kind of like go, oh, you know, I'm stuck. Like I really need to come up with some cool ideas. It's not necessarily cool ideas. It's just the way that you've actually set up in structure. And for businesses that are already up and running, if your structure can't survive something like uh, th that has just happened, now's the time to restructure or look at it and then reinvent or kind of like go left or go right and shut something down or 
but you have to be realistic, you know? So uh, find a really good quality accountant that can give you some good quality advice and help you clean up the shit. Because quite often people, you know, like they've got unpaid taxes or they've got unpaid superannuation, which is what actually adds the stress that kind of stuff and pressure, a lot of my clients are like, oh my God, you know, cash flow, this, it's like, well, go and speak. You don't come to a branding strategist for financial advice. Yeah. You know, if your pressure is financial struggle, go and get good quality financial advice. Yeah. You know, spend, spend your effort and your time there. You know, don't keep, people always want expansion and growth. But the problem is if you grow, and this is something I learned with Love Lockets, you know, 900 to 2.8 million in less than three years, people go, wow, fairy tale, amazing. Yeah, but, you know, I made some fundamental mistakes there. I yeah. didn't have the platforms. I didn't have the structure in place to actually see me through the drama. Yeah. So, you know, like you've just got to have your good, good quality. Get you, and the thing is, Saying something, you know how they say, know your numbers, know your figures and know how to read a balance sheet. Come on, I'm 43. I, I still don't know how to interpret a balance sheet, right? Yeah. I don't. I don't like looking at numbers. They drive me nuts. Don't like it. So I have to make sure, and I've made bad choices, poor choices with financial advisors in the past, bookkeepers and everybody else. Or what people do is they're like, oh, he's cheap. It's not about cheap. It's about quality. And quite often you reach out to your community and ask them for advice a good recommended kind of like financial strategist. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise anything else. If you're struggling at the moment, go and look at your finances, structure it, make sure that you can cope with growth, then set about looking for growth strategy. Yeah. Beautiful. So with one, I, one thing I said at the start of this podcast was I absolutely love your rawness, your vulnerability, and you say it how it is. I'm imagining that's got you into trouble in yeah. the past or probably continues to, to get you into trouble. And I think it's so interesting, isn't it? Because from a branding perspective, you know, you really go for some really great topics out there that no one will even touch. And I, yeah. I've listened to some of your podcasts. I just love them. You know, how do you, how do you see that from a branding perspective? Because some people will say, it's polarizing, which it can be, absolutely. Yeah. But what are your, what's your thought process on that? I dip in and out of it. Do you know, can I just quickly reflect back? Do you know what you said to me, like from a leadership perspective? I flick in between being a leader and a follower, right? Yeah. So I struggle, always go back because I am so many different, I'm different things, I'm multifaceted. Yeah. I can think one thing one minute and then think it a different thing the next. And it doesn't matter how polarizing somebody wants to make me, right? I can make a statement and say, I don't like pigs. I think all pigs are disgusting and I need to get rid of them, right? And, and then go on this whole thing about the reasons why I don't like pigs. Yeah. And then through the miracle of conversation, I'm putting myself out there to invite people to have a conversation. Someone comes in and says, but why? Pigs are beautiful. They're actually really super intelligent. You could actually have a pig come to your house and he'd act like a dog and he'd do all the stuff and these things. Pigs are amazing and keep you warm at night. <laughs> and I'd be like, oh my God, I, I just didn't even realize that that's what a pig could do. And yeah. here I am in my limited knowledge and my limited experience with the pig, you know, having my opinion because I'm allowed and I'm entitled to an opinion yeah. or at least to be able to communicate how, my thoughts and feelings on something. Are we that? disconnected or that judgmental that we are unable to have conversations that lead us to a point of further education so that we can make informed decisions yeah you know I, I, you can call me polarizing you can call me combative or combative you can call me many things and i've been called worse yes. <laughs> many things. and i think you know i i take it back to you know when you're kids you know when you're a kid and you can ask freaking any question yeah. And there's no stupid question. And I've, I've often said a, a story when my son was little. We were, we were at the Melbourne Zoo and he was only tiny. And they were, they, there was a seal enclosure and the guy was doing like his presentation down at the zoo. And, and my son was probably four or five, I can't remember. And he's doing this presentation and the guy said, has anyone got any questions? And my son put his hand up and says, yes. And he said, how many seals are there? And I'm like, 
as an adult, I'm like, what a stupid question. There's freaking four. I can see the freaking four seals. And I'm embarrassed, right, Hayley? I'm like, mm. <laughs> you know, oh, well, there's four. And um, and the guy said, what a great question because we have four seals here and we also have another enclosure with another four. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> and it was just such an eye-opener for me that yeah. this little kid taught me, my son taught me, that you know there's there's so much that we can explore just by opening our mind and what you sometimes see in front of you isn't the reality no no it's a really big lesson for me and do you know what, tell me what I, my, the answer i would have and in my limited seal knowledge i'd have been like yeah there's 3.25 million of them and they're at, actually at risk and that's what i would have gotten from that yeah. Hey, because you had one reaction to it, being the mother and kind of like already anxious because he's out there saying something. So, you know, I, 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 conversations are super important. That's why we started Obsessed Up. It is about a conversation. No one should ever shut down a conversation. And yeah. you know what's really in, incredible, right? I can, I can change my mind. Yeah. At any point in time, and people are so hell-bent on being known for one particular thing or one particular thing and that they they'll do anything at the cost just to maintain that image yeah when life's not like that sometimes you know we can bend and flex and dip in and out of ideas and you know society wants to say to those people that they're flaky it's like well no actually i can change my opinion based on education on conversations and interaction or anything like anything could happen to kind of like change my opinion on anything on any topic at any time so but if you can't have a conversation and you can't invite people on a into debates or you know as long as you're being you're respectful I don't think I'm ever disrespectful although I have kind of put my point across a little bit forcefully at times <laughs> yeah. but what I love with what you're saying is I think you've got to have a level of emotional maturity yeah because as humans, I know that we have such a need to be right. And sometimes I think that can get in the way of us exploring anything that's outside of that. Yeah. And so that's why I love what you do because it gets people thinking. And, mm -hmm. and as you said, if you if this is you're expressing what you're thinking right now, and you may just you may change your mind tomorrow because you've got different information. Yeah. But I think, and you know, one of the things I teach my clients is to have that freaking voice. There's yeah. so many people that that don't stand up for what they believe in, mm. and they they don't say what they really feel in fear of being judged. And I yeah. think you're a really great advocate for speaking up and saying what you think about different things. And I think that's really commendable for you. Thank you, darling. There's a, quite a few people that actually will like. I'll put myself out there, and instead, of, they'll never ever comment. On social media yeah they'll privately message me and say hey babe like I really love what you're standing for but you know I can't really kind of say anything because you know I'm in this industry or whatever I just want to commend you because you know you're out there doing your stuff and your things and I'm just like I feel bad for those people yeah so bad I'm like you are unable to be yourself because of the constraints and fear of judgment of society or or your network or your people because you have built yourself up to be a certain thing the, it's, it's like it's like a prison it's like yeah. literally you've built yourself a little prison yeah so you know it, it blows my mind I'm never gonna not be my myself so yeah I'm many things all at once how do you deal with how do you deal with any trolls anyone that that because I'm sure you you've had lots of those whether they personal message you or whatever how do you what and I'm sure there's probably different ways you deal with them but what's your thought process when you get someone that's really aggressive 10 years ago I used to have a go yeah I used to have a go I'd go back at them um now uh just so grateful yeah everything's algorithmic you know I'm a what does it say I'm a professional attention seeker right it's what we do <laughs> so all of it's important you know the love the hate and all that kind of stuff and you know going off what I just said Maybe they're just looking for an opportunity to have a conversation to have them change their mind. Yeah. You know, not everybody. I mean, people get triggered sometimes. I talk about a lot of triggering topics and I appreciate that. And if I can't 
you know, kind of like get them to receive what I'm saying, then I just say, you know what, thank you so much. I really appreciate your attention. I really appreciate your love. Thank you. And I literally just put the little pray hands and the little heart emoji. <laughs> I think that's my, they're my two emojis I use the most. Yeah. <laughs> what do they say there's a meme going around facebook isn't there like you, you know like you kind of you can see what kind of mindset you are and kind of person you are from the top five emojis that are in your frequently used it is but the last 12 months i have to admit with some of the stuff that's been going on the, on the world there might be some grumpy faces can we do it now can you have you got your phone I'm recording on our phone, on my phone. Well, yeah, I was going to say, because like I could literally look at my, like we could compare and see which, we maybe put that in the comments later. Yeah, we'll do comments later, but yeah. So before then, I would never use the grumpy face, but now, and it's really interesting. Angry. To see. Yeah. <laughs> angry, or the sad face, it's angry yeah. or sad. I have to sort of weigh up which one I'm, I'm going to use. Um, yeah. But it's interesting too how, how from a coach's perspective, you know, people, you know, I think that it's so great to express all different sides of yourself. And, yeah. you know, I sometimes see coaches that are a bit Pollyanna, you know, it's like, oh, <sighs> right, you know, it's like lollipops and, and you know, the sun's out. and which Overly is, positive. It's great, it's great to have a great positive attitude, but it's also great to get pissed off. You yeah. Know, great to to say no that's not acceptable and I think that's what I love you know that's what I also love about you is that you you stand up for what you believe in and you can see those different shades of who you are because all of us are multifaceted mm. you know, I'll say you know I can I'm I'm like a mother hen with my clients I'm like I nurture them and I hug them and you know I even cook for them sometimes but then you know we talk about something that's happening with a pedophile I'm like oh freaking hell he you know I would kill him you know <laughs> or, or do you know what step on from that like with my clients I'm really really real with them I will tell them when they're being ridiculous you know because the problem is well I find a lot of problem with some of the small business owners they get yes men a lot you know their husbands wives friends oh my god that's amazing babe and I, nothing you know if you're on like-minded bitches nothing shits me to tears yeah. Then when you see these people put up these posts, it's like, oh, I'm doing this painting. What do you think? It's fucking disgusting is what it is. That's what I want to say. I used to be like that. And then I was yeah. known for being like, <laughs> I was like, well, you asked. I wouldn't yeah. say fucking disgusting, but I'd be like, it's really not. You're not a good artist. Yeah. And so through our, like when we did our um, 30 minute free strategy sessions, um, actually I'm doing it at the moment as well. Just kind of like offering people 30 minutes just to shoot the shit and try and solve problems for them. I had one lady come on. She's like, I'm a graphic designer. I was like, brilliant. Okay. She said, I'm having struggling. I'm getting, you know, I can't really, you know, get graphic design clients. I was like, show me. Okay, let's have a look. I'm like, oh, God, like, um, I don't know why you're a graphic designer. I was like, you, you're not a very good graphic designer. Yeah. And she was like, horrified, sitting yeah. in the room just like this, horrified. And then I kept scrolling through her website and I saw, I landed on packaging design, right? Yeah blew my mind blew my mind I was like what are you doing doing graphic design you're a package designer and now she's got a very successful doing packaging design yeah so you know sometimes honesty and brutal straight between the eyes is is needed yeah but yeah. there is to deliver it yeah and yeah. that's where and that could be more loving than anything else yeah giving that 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 true feedback with love we've all seen the reality tv shows haven't we the singing yeah. ones where the mothers are like, oh, my God, you've got the voice of an angel. And they're just like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Nothing. Do that again. Do that again. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, <laughs> that's not your singing voice. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I can sing. <laughs> so go on. <laughs> Oh dear. Um, so oh, we're, nearly, we're nearly at the end or we're nearly up to our 10 questions. That's, that's I'm excited. Friggin' flown. I could talk to you for hours. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what's your vision for the next 12 months, five years? Where do you want to go? I want desperately more than anything else um, for our AWL event to be Band-Aid vibes, right? Um, I know I do all the stuff and the things for the money and all that kind of stuff. I just really, 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 really want people to stop hurting children. Yeah. Um, 
hurt children hurt other adults and hurt other people so we've got to stop it's ridiculous and we need to stop sticking our head in the sand and and um, not having those uncomfortable conversations because it doesn't serve anybody and if it's hard for you to hear it imagine what it's like for the kid that's going through it living it every day so yeah. i want i want our event to become global we're getting a lot of people um jumping on board not many people say no everybody shows up yeah um, so we've got some pretty cool things happening at the moment and we don't say no to anybody like the event where people actually jump on board say for instance we have photographers they're like oh you've already got a photographer I'm like nope you can come too the more yeah. photographers that we have the better videographers don't care everybody this is in the Gold Coast isn't it it is yeah, yeah. it's in the Gold Coast cool. so we're looking for people to volunteer for businesses to donate products and services to sponsorships um, obviously people that we want to come to the event like bums on seats Yep. Um, we raised one hundred and twenty-six thousand dollars last year. This year, we'll want to aim for a million bucks, and we're supporting three charities this year. But I always partner with um, Project Rescue Children. We're heavily partnered with Adam Whittington and Pro Project Rescue Children. Yeah, um, I'm always will be. Um, we're heavily partnered. I learn a lot from. We learn. We lean on each other a lot. Um, and this year, we've also got Hark Angels with Richie Harkham, and he builds uh, schools and education centres for victims of um, trafficking in Myanmar and then we've also taken on this year GBB Charitable Trust and she deals with uh, babies that have been raped from the age of uh, predominantly from zero to 12. Yeah so yeah. they have given us specific projects that we're going to fund for them so we'll give them funds if we can raise it and then yeah. the rest of it goes to the incredible work that Adam does every single day uh, rescue and recovering um, sexually exploited children. Wow, that is, you you doing that work is absolutely amazing. And um, if you can give me the link that we oh, can right. add to to this podcast, um, and I'd love to give you you my, I don't know if this is something you can work with, but I've got a two day empowered speaker course for business owners, and it's valued at four thousand dollars. So I'd love to give that. Um, That's okay. You'll make me cry. Stop it. I'm not going to cry on. <laughs> I love it. It's so good. And this is the thing, because people go, the problem's so big, what can I do? Well, there's heaps you can do. You might not be able to be out there, you know, rescuing the children like Adam does and like, you know, the people that Richie and, and Genevieve's organisations work with, but we can all use what we use in our magical powers to make a difference. Yeah. And it really yeah. does. And I'm very grateful and I'll make sure that um, the team know and I'm very grateful for your offer. Thank you yeah. very much. Beautiful. And if you need any people, I've got my my tribe. I've got a few people at the Gold, the Gold Coast because I do trainings in the Gold Coast and Queensland and uh, uh, well, Brisbane and the Gold Coast as well. So if there's any more people, hands that you need, I'm yes. sure I've got some people. There is. We, we need, but there's going to be a thousand people in the, in the room. So we say yes to everybody. Anybody that wants to help volunteer, whatever it is, we say yes. So that they can go to largestlunch.com or .com.au. So that's yeah. largestlunch.com.au. And you can just fill in a form there, put your email in and we'll contact you and just let us know how you want to help. Beautiful. Love it. Love it. Uh, and if, if the guys listening want to follow you, how do they get in contact with you and understand what you're about and I'm sure people are going what's that podcast that she's has I want to listen to those juicy subjects that she's talking about <laughs> how can they follow you okay so there's bink.com.au I'm on Facebook you can follow me I've got a Hayley Bird Aussies page my own personal page people friend me all the time and I don't generally say no it just hits a limit and I have to unfriend people yeah. um we're on Instagram as the ink official I go to clubhouse a lot so I'm in clubhouse under be ink and um, my own name Hayley Bird Aussies so there's heaps I'm pretty much everywhere you can google me and track me down yeah beautiful love it love it well we're ready for our are you ready for your rapid fire 10 questions already Whoa, okay, okay. I feel like I'm going off the... <laughs> All right, so number one, best piece of advice you've been given? My Auntie Pam, not everybody is like you. Love it. What's your favourite book that you've read? Art of War by Sun Tzu. Beautiful, I've got that here. Who would, you pl who would play you in a movie? Me. <laughs> Good answer. Uh, 
if you could change your name, what would you change it to? Princess Consuela Banana Hammock. <laughs> You've been watching Friends. Friends. <laughs> I can't remember what what um <laughs> crap bag. Jan Falange or something. Falange. Regina Falange. Regina Falange. If you could trade lives with anyone for a day, who would it be and why? I would change uh, probably Adam Whittington from PRC. I'd be able to be on the floor and kind of like see firsthand and, and kind of really muck in and, and, and help. Yeah. Beautiful. If you could win an Olympic medal for any sport, real or fake, what would it be? <laughs> um, I just snorted. Um, it would be, it would be the ADHD awards. Yeah. I feel like I'd nail it. Yeah. <laughs> If you could have any five people, alive or dead currently, to your dinner party, who would you choose? Well, I'm going to be controversial here. Hitler? Yep. Um, I'd have um, Bill Gates. Yep. Trump. Well, this is really shaping up to be a crazy party. <laughs> I would have... Um, I'd actually have my dad's mum so my grandma because she died when we were young and I just remember being so beautiful and I'd love to have the opportunity to kind of like spend some more time with her so yeah and then I would have my husband because he would literally have such a great conversation with Hitler he would not in the way because he's not pro Hitler just because he's so into kind of like war and that kind of stuff he'd know all the questions to ask and I'd just be sat there going <laughs> watching it all unfold <laughs> if you could have one superpower what would you have um the ability to eradicate child trafficking love it what's your hidden talent singing oh i <laughs> well I, I hope it's a bit different than uh -huh. what, <laughs> <laughs> what legacy do you want to be remembered for that's the last one Helping people. Love it. Love In it. Which possible. I, I'm nervous about my questions now. <laughs> You're a very straight shooter, you ones. Come on. <laughs> okay. If you could choose a lifetime supply of something, what would it be? Or uh, personal development books. Yes, I love that. Um, what's a secret talent that no one knows about you? Uh, I used to be a cabaret dancer. Shut the front door. <laughs> I love that. I need to stalk you now. Who's your favourite singer? Oh, you know what? I'm going to go old and I'm going to go Elvis Presley. A little bit of blue suede shoes. Yeah. Um. Okay, cheese or chocolate? Chocolate. If you had to give up one thing, what would it be? And why? Oh, give up something. Uh... I would give up, oh, gardening because I hate it. <laughs> I feel like you're addicted. I've really, just looked at a dead plant. <laughs> I just buy the new one. Just buy a new one. Don't water them. Just buy a new one. I feel like you need to take it up, not give it up. <laughs> I love it. Very good. Okay, so what's the most embarrassing thing you've ever done? I, oh, geez, it's probably a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> Say top 10. <laughs> in the top I'll tell 10. you one. I'll tell you one. <laughs> I was presenting in front of a group and I farted. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst. What did you do? Did you try to cover it up with like, Sometimes, you know, like you grate the table or you click your fingers or you try and scrape your shoes. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it, was a little, it was a little bit like the sound of your singing. <laughs> Told you my questions were weird. Okay, great. <laughs> Just like it sort of sounded like someone <laughs> scraped something. <laughs> Do you know what? Probably nobody noticed. Did you tell them what you'd done? No. <laughs> Okay. Going, I remember that time. 
<laughs> oh, so good. Now they'll know. Yeah. So what what are you most afraid of? What am I, uh, what am I most afraid of? Losing the people I love. What's the worst thing about you? The worst thing about me is, oh, the worst thing about me. <sighs> worst thing about me. Oh, that's a challenging one. Mm. Um, such a half glass full person. The worst thing about me is that I don't stick to a fitness routine. Good. And I'm driven in all, like all my other areas, but fitness, I'm not, I'm not as driven. So you got to get serious about your health then. Look at this, right. this is great. This is, this is lovely. Okay. So what's the best thing about you? The best thing about me is that I love people and I'm, I'm a definitely a glass half full person. Love it. And then finally, what will it say on your gravestone? She inspired people to have a better life. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first time I've done those two questions, the 10 questions back to me. And I love it. <laughs> that is good though. From now on now, I love that. I was all a bit like, oh, now I'm putting myself on the spot. What a crazy <laughs> than I am. <laughs> so how, you may go back to our interview saying like, you know, it's easy to kind of focus on the good stuff. Yeah. How is. hard is it to go, well, actually, what's the worst thing about me? Because that's the stuff that you need to fix. They're the holes in the boat. Absolutely. So I just want to say thank you so much, Hayley. I really loved interviewing today and uh, for your time. And I know the guys that are listening will absolutely love what you've, uh, what you've shared with me today. So thank you so much. When I'm at the Gold Coast, Hopefully I'll be flying there in the next six months and doing events as long as I don't have to have a vaccine. I'll be there. <laughs> I'm in uh, Brisbane. I'm in Brisbane. Oh, Brisbane. Yeah. Brisbane. Yeah, well, I do Brisbane and the, all the Gold Coast, so I, I alternate. So I'd love to catch up when I'm over there. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. And see, see your podcast studio. That'd be fun. Come in. We're, I'll interview you. I'll return. Yeah, so. yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. And, yeah, we'll make sure we put the link to your to the great lunch that you're having um, to help uh, stop child trafficking. And I'll make sure that we talk in regards to me getting that voucher for you for uh, for the Empowered Speaker course for whoever is going to, to get that from your lunch. Thank you so much. That's okay. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it. Thanks, Hayley. Bye. See you.